The genre of the medical encyclopedia, a text that covered all illnesses that could afflict a person from head to toe, flourished in the Islamic world. The Persian physician Al-Razi composed one known, composed a medical encyclopedia known as the Kitab Al-Hawi Fi Al-Tib, a comprehensive book of medicine, as did another scholar, Ali ibn Al-Abbas Al-Majusi, who wrote a complete book of the medical art, the Kitab Kamil Al-Sina al tibia these encyclopedias were well known in the medieval Islamic world, but the encyclopedia that gained perhaps the most fame and was most widely utilized in the medieval West was one by Abu Ali Hussein ibn Abdullah ibn Sina, who died in 1037. His Qanun fi al-Tib, his canon of medicine, which was translated into Latin as a Liber Canonis. So who was Ibn Sina and why was this text so popular? Ibn Sina, or as he, became to, as he became known in the Latin West, Avicenna, as Avicenna, was a polymath who wrote compendia and treatises across a range of subjects, including philosophy or Islamic falsafa, as well as Islamic philosophical theology, known as kalam, in, as well, in addition to his works on medicine. We have over 150 works attributed to him, including works on natural philosophy, on allegory, such as Hay ibn Yaqzan, thought experiments such as his thought experiment on the flying man, as well as poetry. In particular, he composed two large-scale compendia, a medical encyclopedia, the canon of medicine, and a work on natural philosophy, the Kitab al-Shifa, both of which were translated into Latin. The Kitab al-Shifa was translated into Latin with the title Sufficientia by Dominicus Gundesalina, working in Toledo. The canon of medicine, which Avicenna completed in 1025 in Ray, a place south of modern-day Tehran, was available in Toledo a hundred years later. It was translated into Latin by the other prolific translator working in the town, Gerard of Cremona, who is thought to have completed the work before 1187. The canon of medicine gained particular fame because of its accessibility as a medical handbook, especially useful to both students and practitioners of medicine. In the canon, Avicenna aims to systematize the theories of medicine set out by the classical authority Galen with that of the natural philosophy of Aristotle. So he, he aims to synthesize both medicine and natural philosophy. In doing this, he wanted to set out both a systematized and, categoric, and a categorical account of both the theory and the practice of medicine. How does he do this? Avicenna did this by dividing his material into five books, each subdivided into chapters known in Arabic as fasl or fun and in Latin as fen. What we see on the screen are two images from two manuscript copies of the Qanun, uh, of the Qanun fi al-Tib, the canon of medicine. On the right, we see an, uh, an image from a 17th century Persian manuscript made in Isfahan, which is an opening page of book three, which depicts diseases on, uh, which is a book that is about diseases on the brain. We can see that there's a little bit of um, language marked out in red ink, which marks out the division from one section to the next. The other image on the screen is one from a Latin commentary on the canon of medicine. Here we can see the clear division and categorization of all medical matters. And it's clearly seen in the layout of this manuscript, of this Latin manuscript. What we see here is the opening page from a 14th century copy of a commentary on the canon by the Italian physician Gentile of Foligno. Here you can see the division marker Fen in red, if you look closely enough, and the layout of the page across clear columns with categories that demonstrates how the text was not only read, but in the case of Foligno here, also studied and commented upon. Now, there are a large number of manuscript copies of the text that attest to its popularity, and these manuscripts are only just beginning to be studied as a whole corpus. We have lots of copies because it became a core textbook on university curricula. 
For instance, by 1309, if you were a student at the University of Montpellier, in order to incept as a doctor, you had to show that you were well equipped and had read the and I had read and I quote the books of Avicenna or failing him Razis, so a reference to um, Al Razi. In particular, students had to show. Uh, sorry, in particular, across a range of universities, students had to show that they had mastered Book 1, Part 1 on physiology, Book 4, Part 1 on fevers, and Book 5 on diseases from head to toe. It was a text that also continued to be popular in the early modern period. It was a text that was printed frequently. We have around 60 complete or partial editions that exist. These editions were printed between 1500 and 1674, demonstrating its popularity and its continued use. And the canon of medicine remained a core textbook in Western university curriculum well into the 18th century. <laughs>